let's start with an invocation. <coughs> Sahana Vavatu Sahano Bunaktu Sahavir Yankaravahi Tejasvina Vadi Tamas Tuma Pidvishavahi Om Shanti 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 We welcome to all of you to the second day of the first batch on the workshop on introduction to traditional knowledge, intellectual property and people's right. We hand over the session to Vishwa Janani ma'am. Please lead the session. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pesh. Namaste to everyone who has joined us on the second day of this workshop between the IKS Division Ministry of Education and the CSIA Traditional Knowledge Digital Library Unit. A warm welcome once again to every one of you. So yesterday we had uh, you know discussed about uh, how wide and diverse and how valuable our Indian traditional knowledge is. Uh, today we are on uh, you know day two. Uh, Anil, can you please share the slides? So as part of the five day workshop, which will be emphasizing on traditional knowledge in the context of intellectual property rights as well as the people's rights. Uh, we will be, you know, touching upon the fundamentals of intellectual property rights today. Uh, but before I go ahead, I thought I should make an announcement. Uh, there were some unanswered questions from yesterday that talked about, you know, largely uh, the uh, Indian progress in mathematical sciences. And, you know, in today's context, the uh, AI, the machine learning, and the artificial intelligence. Uh, while I am not an expert in either of the subject matters, be it uh, you know mathematics or the artificial intelligence, I'd like to clarify one point, uh, especially from uh, you know the perspectives of uh, how our country is progressing. Uh, we need to understand and appreciate that you know while our ancestors ancestors have given us a uh, valuable heritage uh, not everything needs to be compared with the contemporary uh, science and technology uh, we need to understand that many of us you know including i and perhaps of, uh, many of you from the participants have been educated and we are doing research in the context of modern science and technology we have taken many of the basic concepts that have been developed in other countries and we are working and we are creating our own benchmarks in each of it. Similarly, in the case of traditional knowledge also, there have been certain of the basics that has been given from by our own ancestors from India and uh, people have used it, you know, in a way uh, that would help in advancement. We need to recognize and appreciate that uh, any contemporary advancements that we have made may have or may not have relevance to our traditional knowledge, but it does not do well to compare every single aspect of what we are seeing as contemporary sciences and advancements to traditional knowledge. So with that clarification, I would like to you know, uh, proceed with uh, today's uh, concept, uh, uh, the workshop uh, on the fundamentals of intellectual property rights. The reason why we thought, you know, we will give you a overview of the intellectual property rights is in the context of the contemporary advancements. One needs to understand for everything that we do today, okay, unless it is a blue sky research, we tend to, you know, develop things which are technical advancements or economic advancements over whatever is already existent, okay? And these small inventions, you know, it could be disruptive innovations or it could be just incremental innovations. We feel pride in each of it because it is something that we have created for us by ourselves. And it might be of, you know, high social relevance also. 
So when I say I have invented something or you have invented something, it calls about you know, an individual or a group of people contributing to some particular advancement. And that becomes a right for us, you know, because we have created that. It has originated from our own creative ideas. When we seek legal provisions to protect our rights on that particular invention, it forms the basis of the intellectual property rights. So today we will be talking about the fundamentals of intellectual property rights. It will touch upon the different aspects of the intellectual property rights right from patents to geographical indications and all the other, including plant varieties. But as I say that, I would also like to clarify, this is only giving you the fundamentals of intellectual property rights. You will get to know more about the context of intellectual property rights to traditional knowledge. And I'd like you to hold on to your patience for one more day before we get on to discussing matters on IPR and TK. So today, I would now like to hand over the forum to my colleague Anil Kumar, who would speak to you about the fundamentals of intellectual property rights. Anil, the platform is all yours. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, IKS Division for their you know, this innovative, uh, uh, innovative <clears throat> collaboration wherein we are discussing about TKDL, IPR and related rights. So when we talk about intellectual property rights and uh, I mean vis-a-vis -vis the traditional knowledge, it becomes very important for us to know the basics of intellectual property rights. So <clears throat> to begin with, uh, so this is the first batch as Ma'am has already you know, explained. So this is the second day of the second day of the first batch wherein we are going to discuss fundamentals of intellectual property rights and we'll also discuss some case studies during this this uh, this discussion. So this session will be of around 45 minutes wherein we will we'll have additional five minutes uh, 15 minutes for question answers by the <clears throat> participants. So if it uh, when we talk about intellectual property rights, I mean uh, these bodhik sampada adhikar. I mean, these rights are basically uh, uh, granted for, I mean, these are the legal rights granted for the creative activities which are done by uh, either the, art, uh, uh, the authors of uh, the creative work or the inventors or somebody who is having uh, a trademark in their name to, to differentiate their products and services from others, GIs, semiconductor device layout designs and other, I mean, forms of IPRs. So when we talk about intellectual property, so these properties are basically intangible in nature. Unlike the tangible property, like no, this camera that is being shown on the screen, uh, we have a certain, I mean, this is the physical property that is, uh, no, that we can perceive. But when we talk about intellectual property, it can't be perceived by our senses. So when we talk about this camera, it has certain elements which have, I mean, some economical or other related values. For example, if we see the Canon, which is written there. So this is the trademark, which this company is using to identify their products from others. So when, I mean, they uh, create a goodwill uh, and reputation in this brand, I mean, the consumers will start recognizing it. So this is one IPR, which is there in this camera. So the other part, I mean, the other thing that we can consider in this camera is the technological enhancements. So the inventive concepts that are involved in this camera uh, with regard to the functioning, with regard to the, I mean, other aspects of this camera, they can be patented in case it is a patentable subject matter. So with regard to other uh, IPRs, we can have some copyrights. We can have other elements of IPR in it. But it is uh, very important to understand when we talk about rights. So there is a concept of obligation also. So when we talk about rights ki adhikaro ki baat karte hai, to we have to you know, obey certain obligations. And the, 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 the arrangement of these rights and obligations vis-a-vis -vis the owner of the intellectual property and the others to who, I mean, who have an obligation to you know, remain away from the, uh, I mean, the, this creative activity, I mean, the rights which are being enjoyed by the owner. 
until or unless there is a explicit or i mean some kind of authorization given by the owner of the intellectual property so when we talk about intellectual creations so it's a cycle when we create something it has i mean it is i mean the the protection is very much necessary because when we talk about inventing something it requires a large amount of labor and investment if we talk about this camera uh, the improvements that are essentially required for you know keeping it at par with the market requirements requires a lot of investment in terms of labor in terms of skills in terms of money so to protect that investment we have to secure those rights in terms of, uh, uh, by i mean through various instruments of intellectual property rights once we do it so there is a you no know, balance between the patent i mean the right holder and people uh, i mean the public at large so when we file a patent application or i mean so uh, i mean we have, we file patent application then the 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 owner of the patent has a right to exclude others however there is an obligation on the part of public to respect the rights that he enjoys but on the other hand the public at large will be able to see the disclosed information so the technological development that has been made or done in this camera should be disclosed to the public up to an extent that when the rights will cease to exist on those technical developments those i mean the people who i mean the public at large will be able to practice that uh, the practice that invention without any labor or any further no requirements of some technical inputs so it's a two way you know arrangement i mean between the owner and the uh, i mean the public so you disclose the the amount of information you disclose and you claim that will remain with you for a certain period of time for example in patents you have 20 years so till 20 years whatever you disclose and claim that will remain yours after the expiry of 20 years it will come to the public and the public can now improve upon the i mean the inven uh, invention that was there so this is how the whole cycle of ipr it runs so <clears throat> if we talk about uh, the various domains of intellectual property i mean the, the, it includes copyrights patents trademarks industrial designs geographical indications and plant variety uh, plant varieties so copyrights they are basically given for literary and artistic creations likewise patents i mean they are uh, covering the inventions and technological advancements trademarks are the legal rights which are given for uh, i mean the signs which are capable of distinguishing goods and services of one from the others likewise industrial designs they are also the i mean they cover the ornamental or aesthetic aspects of articles uh, and the, uh, geographical indications these are the rights which uh, a link i mean which are linked to the quality and reputation of goods which are uh, you know specifically attributed to a geographical location and if you talk about the plant varieties uh, registration it uh, i mean the i mean the rights are granted for new varieties and other i mean uh, <clears throat> associated registrations so moving ahead uh, first we'll disc i mean we'll discuss and we'll see how patents i mean for what patents are being granted so if we see i mean the 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 protection that is granted under invention it is granted for a product or process so basically patents are granted for solving a problem in case there exists a problem which is to be solved then only a patent is granted okay so if you talk about a product then there must be a i mean there must be a problem and there must be a solution to it then only i mean the solution should be a product and in case i mean you are doing something new uh, in a different way or a by way of a different process then the the protection will be granted for a process if you see the first example of this bicycle which was patented in i mean january 1900 so if you see cycles i mean basically i mean you employ your lower part of your body while cycling and uh, so i mean there is a there is a inherent you no know, problem with cycling that your upper part of the body it remains uh, quite silent as compared to the lower part so what the inventor did in this invention was he made a cycle wherein you can row like a boat so your upper part of body plus your lower part of body both are working okay so there was a problem 
okay and the this inventor he came with a solution with a rowing bicycle um, god knows how he is going to you know stop this cycle because i don't think there is any proper mechanism for brake but still i mean it qualified i mean to be a patentable subject matter and it got a patent in 1900 likewise if you see this bottle opener okay so this is an invention which was uh, granted patent in 1930 39 so we have seen bottle openers which work from down to up okay but somehow they have i mean they have employed this new way of opening bottles okay so for this uh, technology all this invention also the patent was granted <laughs> if you see the purpose of this uh, patents so they are basically to promote the technological innovation so until or unless we are not having proper information of what is being developed in this state of art we are not we will not be able to improve upon it so the patents are being granted for technological advancement over the existing art that is the the state of art which is being you no know, currently practiced and uh, if you talk about the commercial uh, rewards uh, if you uh, uh, i mean secure a patent it gives you a fair commercial rewards for a certain period of time for a patent it's 20 years so for 20 years it give you an exclusive right to practice that uh, invention and you can you no know, exclude others from uh, practicing those inventions for this division and uh, as i explained earlier so there is a you no know, i mean the balance between the rights so what the public at large gains so they get the information which is properly documented and published in a technical report when we i mean in in uh, in terms of a specification okay so if we talk about the definition of invention uh, as i as i as we discussed it includes both product and process and there must be an inventive step in that and it must be capable of industrial application so with regard to requirements of a patent i mean to be registered it must relate to a product or process or it may relate to both okay and the essential ingredient of i mean the requirement of this uh, grant of a patent is novelty it should be new new in terms of the publication it should not have been published before the date of filing in case you have published something or the information about that invention existed before the date of i mean the filing which is the priority date then your novelty is gone and you will not get a patent okay another thing that is i mean essential for uh, getting a patent is inventive step so i mean i mean there are two kind of you no know, inventions which are patentable one is like a new invention something which never existed is quite novel you can definitely get a patent over it but in case you i mean if you talk about this cycle so there the, the cycle existed before the date of i mean uh, filing this patent application however the mechanism that has been added to this uh, i mean bicycle which is the mechanism of rowing gives a inventive step okay and it should be beyond i mean uh, the the reasonable expectation of a person who is skilled in that art to work out okay so there must be a element of inventiveness which is beyond expected by a person having ordinary skill and then in that art uh, additionally it should be industrially applicable it is one of the essential requirements so until or unless something is not industrially applicable capable of being produced in industry it is not going to i mean granted as Uh, by the <clears throat> patent office additionally i mean in case something qualifies to be an invention as per the definition which is provided there and and it fulfill the requirements as elaborated above but in case it is not a patentable subject matter as per the domestic law of that country then you will not get a patent so if we talk about india yeah if we talk about india section 3 and 4 they talk, i mean they talk about the inventions which are not patentable so it's a negatively written provision wherein if you see i mean there is a list of list of inventions which are not patentable in india so if you talk about i mean the section 3 uh, it's a very lengthy provision and it talks about certain invention which are not patentable if you see this uh, i mean the 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 section 3 sub so, i mean 3 <clears throat> a it says i mean something let me read it out yes it says 
啊。An invention which is frivolous or which claims anything obviously contrary to well-established natural laws. So we all know there's that it's not possible for I mean I mean to make a machine which is hundred percent efficient. In case we file a patent application claiming that we have a hundred percent efficient machine and it works, that becomes I mean it's it's it is no we know it's a frivolous thing and it it can't happen. Uh, so it's a frivolous invention and it is not. Although it qualifies all the re essential requirements of being an invention, but it will not be granted patent in India. Okay. Likewise, if you see the sub, I mean the another, I mean the next uh, sub, uh, <clears throat> the provision, it says an invention, the primary or intended use of the commercial exploitation of which could be contrary to public order or morality, or which causes serious prejudice, prejudice to human, animal, or plant life, or health, or to the environment, is not patentable in India. So if you see, I mean the. <clears throat> Sorry. So if we, if somebody you no know, develops a machine, which is basically a machine for gambling, it helps the people to you know have better chances of winning a gamble. Then it is definitely contrary to the public order and morality. So it's not patentable in India. Likewise, if you develop something or invent something or, or a machine or a device, which is, I mean, uh, which will break open the house. Okay. So that is also against the public or, uh, order and morality, and it will not be granted patents. Likewise, if we talk about the <clears throat> uh, periodic towards the health of human and animals, plant and environment, the other inventions like, I mean, the warfare material, the biological uh, warfare materials, in case something is capable of being used as a warfare material, I mean, that cannot be patented since it's prejudiced, I mean, prejudiced to the health of human animals and environment. Likewise, we have seen that, I mean, the Terminator gene technology, which was, I mean, there was a huge, I mean, uh, discussion on this. And likewise, if you see the next provision, it says the next one is, uh, it says the mere discovery of a scientific principle or the formulation of an abstract theory or discovery of any living thing or non-living substance occurring in nature. So if we see, I mean, something which occurs in nature without any human intervention, or if we discover something which existed before, like minerals, materials, which are, which are already there in the nature. And uh, so we can't claim any uh, right over it because it is not an invention as per the definition of i mean the i mean under section 3 however we might it might happen that i mean the i mean the mineral that we have discovered never existed before okay so it's novel it i mean uh, it's quite novel because it was not published there was no information about it but since it is barred from i mean uh, registration under section 3 we can't get a patent over it. Likewise, if we section 3D, it says discovery of a new form of known substances or new use of known substances. So we all know, I mean, <clears throat> that, uh, I mean, there are certain, I mean, salts and esters which behave like the, I mean, their, 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 their I mean, counterpart and <clears throat> they can, I mean, this can help in evergreening of patent applications. So once you have, a form, I mean, you have a substance, you can't claim right over a new form of that substance. Okay. Likewise, a new use of the known substance is also not patentable in India. In section 3E, mere admixture leading to aggregation of properties. So 3E, it says, I mean, I mean, uh, it the soaps, detergents, if we admixture them, okay, and the, the resultant composition leads to just aggregation of the properties. So that cannot be patented. Likewise, in section 3F, uh, mere aggregation and duplication <clears throat> of devices whose working is already known. So they are also not patentable. So for, I mean, in this case, we can now presume that a chair, uh, a chair having some other functionalities, like we attach a fan to this chair. Okay. 
so that what, whenever we move, I mean, the fan is, uh, I mean, in proximity with our body to give us, I mean, comfort in uh, air. So in this case, I mean, there is a mere aggregation and duplication of known devices. The chair was already known in the prior art. It was well established and the fan, the functioning of fan was also there. So combining these two elements together uh, will not lead to, I mean, an invention which is patentable in India. Likewise, if we see section 3H, methods of agriculture and or horticulture, they are not patentable. Methods of surgical, curative, prophylactic, diagnostic and therapeutic uh, applications are not patentable. Processes for treatment, humans and animals, they are not patentable. Okay. Likewise, plants and animals in whole or any part of, or any of their part is not patentable. However, microorganisms are patentable in case there is any human intervention. So naturally occurring microorganisms are not patentable. But in case we have an intervention which change the nature of, I mean, these microorganisms that is patentable subject to qualifying the essential uh, no, requirements of the patent act. And likewise, mathematical and business models, they are not patentable. Uh, then uh, section 3L says, I mean, the subject matter of copyright and designs, they are not uh, patentable because they have to be you know, uh, protected under the respective law, which is copyright law and design law of India. That's the reason it has been excluded from the uh, I mean, excluded under section three from being patentable. So likewise, if you see section three M scheme or method of mental act or playing games, it is also not patentable. Then presentation of information is, I mean, it falls under, I mean, the element of uh, this, this uh, invention falls under copyright. That's the reason it is not patentable under uh, <coughs> the, under this section. Likewise, integrated circuits, they are, I mean, we have a separate law on integrated circuits to protect the interest of the, uh, the creators. That's the reason it is excluded from being patentable in India. And most importantly, if, if any of the inventions have a, they are based on the traditional knowledge or it may include, I mean, they have an aggregation of known properties of traditionally known substances, then it, it is also not patentable. Uh, apart from that, if you see the section four, it says atomic energy inventions are also not patentable in India due to strategic reasons. Okay. So if we see the examples which are patentable is like we can patent apparatus, devices, machines. This is a chair which is patentable in case there is any inventive feature which has been added to the uh, uh, existing no, the state of art. Then we can have no chemicals, uh, um, uh, chemicals uh, patented. Then we have drug, food and their compositions provided there is no uh, sufficient amount of human intervention is there. Biological processes are generally not patentable. Uh, but in case there is any human intervention, it, it becomes something which is, which never existed and it is not possible. I mean, it is not, it, it never existed in nature, then they are patentable subject to qualifying the essential requirements under the act. Likewise, biological products, you no know, biotech biotechnological inventions, process of manufacture and other <clears throat> related activities are patentable. So now we'll discuss about the, the, the process for I mean filing a patent application and see how I mean these patent applications are granted in India. So if, if I mean in case somebody is interested in filing a patent application, then the competent office is the office of CGPDTM, Control General of Patent Designs and Trademarks. So for patent applications, we have four offices. Uh, one is in Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai, <coughs> uh, and Kolkata, where we can I mean uh, file these patent applications. Pro, I mean, there is a, I mean, prescribed uh, documentation. We have to have form one, wherein the details of the applicant, detail of the inventors, the, and other, you know, geographical details of the applicant are being uh, entered. And we have uh, form two, wherein, I mean, we uh, disclose the invention. So we have to disclose the invention uh, so as to make a person capable of practicing it without any labored process. So the, the, the disclosure requirement is very essential. You have to prepare a, a, a patent application in form two to make it, you know, I mean, to, to, to produce in a manner that somebody who reads it, uh, read that uh, specification can work out the invention. Okay. 
So once you file the patent application, it can be filed provisionally or complete. So in case you want to file up, I mean, you have an idea on which you want to work, then you can file a provisional application wherein you have 12 additional months to file a complete application. So during these 12 months, you can have, no, you can work on that invention, make it complete and file it within 12 months. Okay. Then once this application is filed incomplete, then the, there is a, a provision of publication. So, uh, I mean, uh, normally these patent applications, they get published after 18 months of the priority date. Okay. But in case you want to have an early publication, you can request the patent office to publish it early wherein it is published within a month. Once it is, I mean, published, then I mean, it is examined, but you have to file a request for examination. Okay. In case you, I mean, miss to file a request for examination, it will not be examined. So, I mean, the request for examination is an essential you know, uh, uh, process uh, for getting your patent examined. And you can file this uh, request for examination within 48 months from the filing date. Okay. So during this pro I mean time from publication of application till uh, the grant of patent application, uh, any third party who is having, I mean, any interest or in case they have something to disc I mean, to submit, which kills the novelty or if which you no know, proves that the invention lacks the essential ingredients. Okay. Then they can oppose that application. Okay. And this patent application, which is being opposed, will be <clears throat> will be uh, i mean examined uh, in view of the submissions that you will be made okay and uh, parallelly i mean the examination process is also go on in case the examiner is satisfied with the submissions and the disclosure that you have made your patent will be granted or else i mean it may be re i mean refused or the, they may ask you to amend the patent application okay and uh, once it is granted you can review uh, renew the patent application and thereafter you can have post grant opposition and I mean other provisions appellate proceedings which can be uh, I mean undertaken by the interested parties. So this is the whole process of filing a patent application how and how it is granted. Okay. So once a patent is granted the, the applicant becomes the owner and whatever he claims, they become their, his or her right. Okay. So in case somebody infringes those rights, he can bring about the, the suit for infringement. When we talk about a product patent, so there are certain rights which are granted to the, the applicant, the owner of the patent, wherein he, he can make he can offer that uh, product for sale. He can sell it. And in case uh, uh, that product is being you know, manufactured uh, outside India, he can import it. But none other than the person whom he authorizes to do, to do these activities, I mean, <clears throat> cannot, I mean, nobody can do it until or unless they, I mean, they have an uh, uh, authorization from the patent owner. Likewise, if we talk about process, then I mean using a process, offering that process for sale, selling that process or importing the product which have been obtained directly by the pot, uh, patented process out, uh, into India uh, also falls under the infringement. Okay, so the rights which are being enjoyed by the the the, the owner of the patent, in case they to those rights without his consent or authorization, he can bring out about the patent infringement proceedings. <clears throat> under the respective law okay and we, when we talk about direct i mean the infringement there are two kinds of infringement one is literal infringement wherein if the i mean the the patented product i mean it's copied literally okay but i mean in case uh, it's not a copying in true sense but the way the the the, uh, the product behaves is similar to what is the patented product then there is an equivalent, uh, the, the infringement by the doctrine of equivalent, and they can bring about the uh, uh, suit for infringement. Likewise, there is an indirect infringement also, wherein I mean, in case somebody induces to infringe, uh, I mean, I mean the, uh, the rights of a patent holder, then the, I mean it's inducted uh, infringement, 
and in, in case there is any contribution from the third party also then that is all, i mean the third party is also liable for contributory infringement of the patent rights so this was i mean uh, the basic you know essential i mean information on patents now we'll move towards the copyright as we all know copyright <clears throat> copyrights are the widely you know practiced rights <clears throat> across the globe and these are the rights which are granted for uh, i mean the the authors okay and uh, there is an element of authorship in it so if we talk about copyrights it is granted for literary dramatic musical and artistic works which should be original in addition to that the rights are granted for sound recordings and cinematographic films so the level of originality is different for sound recordings and cinematographic films just because they are a combination of the original items which i discussed i mean which i, I explained okay so, so so essentially if we talk about uh, uh, literary dramatic musical and artistic work so there is a i mean uh, the in case of musical works there is a combination of these elements to form a form a work which is you no know, uh, which can be protected under sound recordings however they may not be original because it's a combination of you no know, early uh, earlier existing items likewise if you talk about cinematographic film it may include your uh, you no know, i mean the writing i mean the script of the movie it is a copyrightable subject matter and uh, if you talk about music you no know, the the <clears throat> the musical connotations or the musical i mean the the, the i mean the uh, musical items in that and we also see the dramatic no uh, the choreographic acts which are being done in music i mean these cinematographic uh, cinematographic films so there is a combination of all these previously previously existing no copyrightable items which all combine to form a cinematographic film okay so in that case so those elements they have individually you know they are individually protected uh, by the respective author and the resultant cinematographic film is again you no know, becomes a copyrightable subject matter which vest in the respective owner so if we see the definition <clears throat> of i mean the 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 copyright which was uh, i mean uh, which was reiterated by i mean um, i mean justice chinappa reddy in gramophone company versus uh, birendra bahadur pande it's a 1984 case of supreme court where it, it was stated that the artistic literary or musical work is the brain child of an author and the fruit of this labor and so considered to be his property so it is the highly prized by all civilized nations that it is thought worthy of protection by national laws and international conventions okay so uh, accordingly if we see india i mean uh, through bun convention uh, we are obligated to give similar kind of you no know, uh, uh, treatment for the i mean the nationals of other states so if we talk about copyright it's a cre uh, creation of statute okay and the creation of statute is like you do i mean <clears throat> if you see uh, you don't require uh, registration the moment you fix that copyrightable element uh, and you express it in a tangible form it becomes i mean an element of protection okay so it's a creation of statute unlike other so you may or may not register it however in india we have a provision for registering it and registering a copyright gives you a, a, a i mean <clears throat> Uh, uh, an indication that uh, you hold the right okay so wherein there is any infringement of a copyright you, uh, the registration certificate that you have will not be a conclusive proof but it will indicate the, that you hold a right so so the proceedings will reduce up to the, the extent that you need not to prove the existence of rights because you have a registration in your name okay when we talk about the purpose of uh, copyrights it in, uh, encourages creati creativity Uh, uh in the <clears throat> society it protects the intellectual effort of the i mean the creators it rewards i mean the efforts for a certain period of time 
so if you talk about the duration of copyright it's a, i mean uh, i mean it's a very length, i mean long duration so if you talk about the literary items which are being copyrighted are uh, copyright protected then the life span of the author plus 60 years which will start from the first day of the next year so this is i mean the duration of protection which is granted under uh, copyright act however it is different for government publications it's i mean 60 years for government publications okay and uh, likewise if we talk about broadcast rights it's i mean a lesser uh, time is provided for them and the purpose of uh, i mean getting these things uh, copyrighted is like you only get right over the copyrightable subject matters once you publish it so you have to make it public okay it might so happen that you create something okay and you keep it secret then you will not get any right so the whole objective of giving right over uh, copyrightable subject matter is to make them public it has to be disseminated to the public okay so that further improvements can be made over that work okay When we talk about subject matter of co uh, copyright, then as I already uh, explained, the copyrightable works, they are either, I mean, original works, uh, which may be literary, dramatic, musical, or artistic works. And they may be a sound recording, which may be a composition of literary or musical work. Okay. Uh, then we, it can be a cinematographic film, where it can be a combination of literary, dramatic, or musical work. Okay. So this is, I mean, how these uh, these uh, subjects are being treated for uh, being protected under Copyright Act. Okay, and the essential element of getting protection under Copyright Act is to express and fix that expression in a tangible form. Okay, and expression should be of ideas. Ideas itself are not protectable. They are only protected when then they are expressed in a tangible form or fixed onto a onto a tangible medium. Okay. So when we talk about the right of owners, okay. So the owners they can enjoy themselves or authorize or prohibit somebody else from reproducing the work in in other forms such as printed publications or sound recordings. Okay, they may regulate the distribution of the copyrightable subject matter. Okay, so the work which is copyrighted, they can have a control over this distribution of those items, those works. Okay, so once they have a copyright, so they can also have, they can also, they can also know authorize or prohibit or enjoy the public performance of that work. Or additionally, some rights are given to the broadcasting agencies also. Okay. So the broadcasting or other uh, communication, other types of communication of this work to the public can also be controlled by the owner, but through various legal instruments like agreements and permissions granted by the owner. Okay, then they can have translation of work in other languages. Okay, so in case you translate any copyrightable subject matter. Okay, in case there is any poem, any story written in a specific language, and you translate that work into a different language that is also protected under copyright okay so you you should have a permission or i mean the authorization from the owner of that copyrightable subject copyrighted subject matter in case you don't have you are infringing on the right of the author likewise the adaptation of the work is also one of the you know, i mean the the rights which the the owner of the copyright enjoys so in case you have a you have a novel and you make a movie out of it you take substantial portion from that novel and makes a movie then it is an infringement of copyrightable subject matter and the person who holds right in that novel can bring about an infringement suit okay so it's always necessary and essential to have proper permissions and authorizations in place uh, under the respective law so as to avoid these uh, these, uh, I mean, infringement suits. So, uh, with regard to the nature of rights, we have three kind of, I mean, rights in copyright. First is the economical right. Okay. So, the owner of the, uh, I mean, owner of the copyrightable subject matter 
enjoys monetary benefits which accrue out of the 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 work which is protected under copyright okay and the another kind of right is moral right okay so the 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 creator okay so the author has a right of paternity in his creations okay so he can say that the work which i have created must be attributed attributed to me okay it might so happen that he has given his rights to other okay by way of any licensing or any contractual arrangement but still these moral rights they vest with the creator okay so we have the most uh, celebrated case of amarnath sagal wherein a mural prepared by amarnath ji was you know installed in uh, science vigyan <clears throat> bhavan okay so it was a mural depicting the life of india how farmers they are doing the i mean their daily jobs so it was a very beautiful mural however after some time it was removed from there and put down in a godown go down okay so the proper care was not given okay so under moral rights the person has a right to uh, i mean to 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 restrain distortion of his work okay so so he brought about a suit against the government of india and he succeeded so probably this was the most celebrated case of moral rights in india likewise there are there are performers right also okay so certain kind of rights are enjoyed by the performers right in case we talk about uh, I, i mean a cinematographic film so the rights are you no know, uh, i mean the producer of that cinematographic film is the who enjoys the economical rights okay although he pays to the to to the to the performers therein okay but still the performers they have a right okay beyond the economical rights which they enjoy when we talk about the remedies of infringement there are three kind of remedies that are available one is in under civil laws one is under criminal laws and administrative measures is also there so if we talk about civil then we can have injunctions issued against the infringer okay we can call for the damages that we have got then we can also uh, i mean request for the rendition of accounts in case somebody has gained out of those no uh, unauthorized activities so he has to surrender that money and uh, give it back to the author i mean the owner then we can also ask for the cost under civil laws likewise if we talk about criminal then it's a cogn i mean offenses under uh, um, copyright i mean law are cognizable and there is a provision for infringement and fine also if you talk about ad administrative measures so we can request the appropriate authorities to you no know, instruct the infringers to cease their activities in case i mean there is any if you believe that there is something which is infringing your rights now we'll talk about trademarks so if we talk about trademarks basically these are the marks which are being used by the uh, by the which are these uh, individuals or business organizations to 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 identify i mean to uh, identify this i mean their goods and services okay and the essential requirement under this trademark law is that the mark which can be expressed or represented graphically are capable of being registered in india okay so if we talk about you no know, i mean a specific word a design sign symbol shape of goods packaging color or combination thereof which are capable of being represented graphically we can uh, get a trademark over it okay and uh, the protection under trademark law is a statutory provision however in case you have a mark which is not registered under the trademarks act of india then you can no claim a right over it okay and the, you can bring about a i mean a, a, a suit under the 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 common law principle of passing off stating that by way of continued use okay i have inherited or i have gained rights in the symbol that i am using or the trademark that is being used to identify my goods or the goods or services from others so this is how trademarks they work if you see this fortis uh, mark in the right it's are i mean th these are the oil lamps which were used you know in ancient times by the romans so this is one of the mark that they used at that time then we have certain other marks like tata mercedes 
so which are being used to identify the source okay so once i mean a consumer identifies and recognize the, the the goodwill and the reputation of the products or the services that they offer they will definitely you know come back to them so it's a it's a device okay which which creates a loyalty towards the customer okay so if you talk about science which can be protected under trademark there so there is a vast i mean uh, list if you see uh, there are uh, certain uh, uh, trademarks which are disclosed there and if you talk about the duration of the protection that is granted is for 10 years and uh, thereafter you can review these trademarks for another 10 years till you want to use them okay so <clears throat> and uh, you have a uh, you can definitely license uh, and uh, no transfer your rights uh, impartially or completely to the other parties so that they can use it and uh, with uh, in addition to i mean the words letters and devices we have three dimensional signs which are i mean give, given protection uh, like uh, if you see the three pointer no mercedes star so it's a three dimensional sign that has been given protection likewise we have other examples also uh, the the unique kind of mark which have been granted are i mean you might have heard of sound marks okay so the musical i mean if you talk about something some sound which can no relate you to the source of that product or process okay then you can get a protection over it provided it is expressed in a uh, in a manner which i mean like you know if you talk about the sound notes uh, or the musical you no know, musical you no know, sound they can be expressed in terms of notes okay so you can file an application stating that these are the notes and i want to have a uh, i am in right uh, under the trademark act uh, which can <clears throat> which is uh, capable of being you no know, capable of uh, make uh, identifying my products and capable of differentiating the uh, i mean the products of others with the i am avoids any confusion then you will get a patent for the sound marks also and in i mean so there are certain unique registrations also uh, in us for the first time smell mark you know it was considered to be the uh, trademark okay so the flesh uh, i mean the fresh floral fragrance of plumeria blossoms champa ke phool jo hote hain i mean uh, those the, the the fragrance of these flowers were used for i mean the sewing thread and embroidery yarn okay so sui dhage ko jab aap open karte hain us packet ko so it gives a smell of plumeria so for the first time this mark was considered to be a trademark and it, it got registration likewise in europe uh, registration was granted for a uh, tennis ball okay so the 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 tennis ball had a smell of freshly cut cut grass okay so these two smell marks have been granted and i am sure that uh, uh, additional marks uh, i mean are also existing uh wherein uh, smell marks were considered to be i mean uh, capable of being registered under trademarks so this is one of the examples from kenya so if we see i mean these tata baskets so these tata baskets i mean i mean they are produced from the fibers of sisal plant okay and uh, there is a unique way of processing these fibers and they have standardized the weaving skills okay so the uh, kind of product that comes from that region has a certain quality okay so pro so to protect and promote those products what they did was they registered this as a collective mark okay and uh, it was also i mean the, the they have us they prescribed certification standards for those baskets also okay so once they had these two kind of no activities done there then i mean the the the, the quality of these data baskets become uni became uniform and this association which was involved in taking all these no uh, measures uh, gained immense consumer confidence and recognition okay so this is a combination of trademarks being used for uh, preserving traditional knowledge okay so likewise 
I mean, we have an example of no Darjeeling tea in India. So basically, Darjeeling tea is a GI. However, in certain countries, it is being registered as a certification mark and as a collective mark also. Okay. So in this scenario, what we observe is, in fact, multiple instruments of IPR can be used for the for the protection of a product or a process. Okay. So we have to just decide how to go ahead and protect our <clears throat> intellectual creation. Now we'll talk about designs. Okay. So uh, if you talk about designs, these are, I mean, uh, these are the, uh, uh, the, the rights under designs are given for a design, <clears throat> given for, I mean, the items or articles which have aesthetic view. Okay. So it's basically look and feel in case I mean, if you see these bottles, so the different shape of these bottles give you a different feel. Okay. And by way of, no, by recognizing these shapes, you can identify the source of the product. Source of the product. And it gives a direct linkage with the, with the producer. Okay. So these, I mean, accordingly, designs can be used as one of the uh, intellectual property tool. Okay to uh, to to protect your innovations okay and the the only requirement i mean the essential requirement under designs to get registered is the originality okay and the the the, the level of originality in designs is somewhat different okay normally what we perceive is originality is like it never existed before but in case if we see this 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 shoe so the, 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 the design which is there may exist previously on a different item. Okay. So in case this design was there on some no clothing item and in the, the same design once applied to the shoe becomes original with respect to this article. Okay. So if you see the definition of original under section 2G, it says in it is in relation to a design, it means it is originating from the author of such design and includes the cases which though old in themselves yet are new in their applications okay and if you see the designs so the shape configuration surface patterns ornamentation okay the composition of lines and colors they all qualify under the designs act and can be registered under design so okay so the only requirement is the design must be applied to the article by manual mechanical or chemical process or a combination of those. Okay. And it is, it must be limited to visual appeal only. Okay. In case the design of an article, it gives a functional, no, functional importance or it becomes essential for an article to behave, I mean, or to function due to that design, it is not registrable. So the only requirement is it should be appealing to the eye. Okay. And it should not have a functional element in it. So these are the, I mean, elements which are not, I mean, these are the articles which are not registrable. Okay. So in case, uh, I mean, uh, the design which are applied to the inner portion of an article, which, which are not visible or noticeable in a finished article, they can't be registered. Okay. So in case they are visible, then only you can get a registration for it. Buildings and structures, they are not uh, allowed to be registered under designs. Part of an article, which article not sold separately. Okay. So the article which is being registered under designs act should be an independent item sold separately. Okay, so in case we have an article which has two components and those two components can be sold individually, then we have to seek two registrations for these two items. We cannot combine them and get a single registration for those, these two items. Okay, then variations which are common in trade, those, uh, those are also not registrable under designs, stamps, labels, tokens, trademarks, cards, cartoons, they're also not registered under designs. However, they qualify to be a design under the definition. Okay. Then mere change in the size of a known design. 
we know i mean uh, in case there is a car which is very you know which has a aesthetic view it looks very nice but if, in case we create a miniature model of that car so we can't claim right over that because the size and the dimensions of that car were already known you have just reduced it to a considered i mean to a sizable manner likewise emblems flags of, flags of nations computer chips integrated circuit designs are also not restable under designs act because we have a separate law on this okay and uh, with regard to the duration of designs they are registered for an initial period of 10 years which you can extend for another 5 years in case you are still dealing with those products okay so once you enjoy these 15 years of uh, i mean the i mean 15 years of uh, 15 years of time for, uh, to enjoy the rights it is not extendable further so this is the maximum limit for i mean the rights granted under designs so now we'll discuss about geographical indications so geographical indications if we talk about they are goods which may be of agricultural natural they may be of any nature agricultural natural manufactured or they may be originating as it is in nature and <clears throat> so the the only requirement under geographical indication is that they must have a given quality and reputation or they may have certain characteristic features which are essentially attributed to the geographical origin okay and that reputation or quality is 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 very unique okay for example if we see darjeeling tea or we see the nagpur orange okay so the quality of darjeeling tea is incomparable you know so the 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 kind of tea we cultivate in other parts of country can't match the quality of darjeeling tea because the essential characteristics of darjeeling tea are associated with the geographical and environmental factors of the location where it is cultivated additionally the the way it is being cultivated and processed is also unique so so the, the quality that is, that are attributed to darjeeling tea and with with which have you no know, led to the reputation of darjeeling tea are essentially attributable attributable to the location okay where it is grown therefore it qualifies to be a geographical indication so these geographical indications they are basically you know some of the examples for which i mean geographical indications have been registered are agricultural products food stuffs wines spirits handicrafts and industrial products okay and these gis in some countries and jurisdictions are registered as collective and certification marks also okay and they are basically protected for 10 years which can be further renewed and uh, <clears throat> the these rights are collective rights and they can't be assigned or licensed however there is a provision of being a registered user so in case uh, the gi is registered by any association which has an interest in the upliftment and uh, promotion of the product then they may allow i mean i mean the, the the users who are residing in those locations and producing these products they may get become a registered user by applying before the respective authority okay so th these rights are basically cannot i mean non transferable non assignable however the users they may become a registered i mean <coughs> user in case they fulfill the essential requirements and reside and work within the uh, i mean the territorial uh, uh, region where for which the right i mean this mark has been registered so in case you want to have more uh, i mean information so the ip india website i mean the it provides the uh, detailed information about the gis which have been registered in india as i told so there are the these are the essential requirements uh, there the, there must be a you no know, territorial limit wherein these products are either i mean i mean grown or processed uh, i mean uh, and uh, at least one of the step in case it's a processed product one stage of 
preparation, processing, or production has taken place in that area. And that location must be defined with regard to the territory, region, and locality. There must not be any confusion because the people who are working in that region or producing those goods in that region will only get the rights and will can become the registered users. If you talk about the reputation, I mean, th there must be a distinctive reputation with regard to the nature of goods, quality, okay, or they might have uh, established a repute uh, either in domestic market or global, or they may have any another feature. So, so this reputation must be linked to the product directly for the given quality, okay. And in case there is any environmental factor which gives, you no, know, which support those activities, so there must be a direct linkage. And in case the essential ingredients are being sourced from the locality, then there must be a direct connection. <clears throat> it may also have an inherent natural, uh, natural or human factors involved into it. Like if we talk about the uh, artifacts which are registered under GI, they are basically, I mean, the human intervention in terms of making them the skills that are being employed, they have a direct linkage with the product. So all these characteristics will give a uniqueness to that product. Okay. And uh, we have to submit, I mean, documents with regard to the historical origin and <clears throat> I mean, opinions of experts are also sought and evidences are submitted to prove your claims. When you file a uh, GI application. So this is, I already explained this. We have, so if we talk about the, the, the types of GIs, we have agricultural products, we have natural products, then we have manufactured. Yeah, these manufactured products are further divided into three classes. Like we have handicrafts, manufactured industrial goods, foodstuffs. Okay, so these are the basic no, broad categories wherein you can file geographical indications before <clears throat> the authority. So this is one of the no, celebrated case wherein there was a dispute between uh, Bangla Rashagulla and Odisha Rashagulla. So the both states were, uh, no, they had a conflict and they both claimed that Rashagulla belongs to them. So in this, I mean, one of the no, celebrated case, the, the right was given to both the states for their, their own Rashagullas. Okay. So the, the kind of Rashagulla, which is, which is produced in Bangla, I mean West Bengal, is different from Odisha in various various characteristics. So the authority decided that they the both parties must get right in their in their respective products because they have different unique I mean characteristics which are linked to I mean the geographical location in those in those states. So the both these Rashagullas were allowed to file separate applications for registration. Uh, apart from that, if you talk about uh, GIs, in terms of traditional knowledge, I mean, GIs, they have a, they have a, I mean, I mean, uh, elements of traditional knowledge in it. Okay. So when we talk about geographical indications, I mean, there are certain uh, parameters, which also includes the way these products are being manufactured or I mean the, the, the knowledge which has been transferred from generations to generations so as to maintain the quality of those products. So if you talk about whirling, whirly paintings which are practiced in Maharashtra, you will see this, that these are the paintings, okay, and they make these paintings on mud walls with white paste. And the paste is a traditionally prepared composition wherein rice, water, gum, they are used, okay. And the the brush that they use to make these paintings are made up of bamboo sticks, okay. So the chew the end of these bamboo sticks and make them into a form of brush. Then they use these brushes and the composition which is prepared traditionally to make these paintings, okay. And I mean there is a traditional no 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 cultural expression attached to it. Because when they make these paintings, they are not mere paintings, but they are basically the stories. Okay. So these, these paintings are basically, you know, drawn for certain occasions. And uh, I mean, these drawings are, I mean, uh, I mean, a depiction or disclosure of their tradition. 
and these are transferred from one generation to another so it is a unique mix of traditional cultural expressions and traditional knowledge and if you see these uh, i mean the application which was filed for valley paintings they claimed uh, right in uh, three classes class 16 20 and 25 basically uh, this is a kind of no adapting these gis or these traditionally i mean traditional cultural expressions to the new contemporary world so originally these paintings were you i mean made on walls but in, if you see the application the, the the rights are asked for i mean the cardboard plastic fibers they also you know claim that wood plywood and furniture will also i mean these valli paintings will also be applied to wood wooden items plywood or furnitures and they claim that they might also be applied to canvas cloth and garments okay so this is an extension of the traditional knowledge to meet the contemporary or the modern needs okay and this shows the 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 the, the way forward to have a i mean for a sustainable model for these gis uh the another you know tool of ipr is the plant variety protection okay and uh, this uh, this tool is being used for uh, seeking protection over new plant varieties huh? in case the breeder or farmer okay they create a variety which has some unique denominations so they in case they qualifies uh, e distinctive uniform and stable through the generations then they are capable of being registered under plant variety protection act and plant variety <clears throat> protection of plant variety and farmers right authority is the uh, regulatory i mean organization which grants patent although i mean the 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 the, the law of you uh, know uh, having these uh, plant variety registered is prescribed by international union of the protection of new varieties of plant upo which was established in 1916 but uh, 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 india not being a signatory of this uh, this uh, uh, instrument has uh, enacted a sui generis sui generis legislation for protection of plant varieties okay and the rights uh, if we talk about the rights i mean the rights are granted for breeders farmers and there are uh, 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 researchers, uh, researchers rights granted under this act also so this is a comparative chart wherein i mean uh, there are four kind of varieties Uh, which are registrable and there are certain you no know, criteria which are attached to it if we talk about a uh, new variety so it must be novel however if we talk about uh, extant and farmer varieties they must not i mean they may not be novel but they must have distinctiveness uniformity and stability okay so the the, the characteristic or denomination that for what for which it is the application is filed must be distinct from the earlier existing you no know, varieties it must be uniform and stable and must be expressed in the uh, next generations also so rights are being conferred respectively if we talk about new variety the right is granted to the breeder to produce sell market distribute import or export the variety okay and there are no variable uh, time duration granted for uh, for uh, for the, uh, uh, the the <coughs> for the there is a differential uh, i mean duration for trees and vines okay and uh, it is like initially 9 years which can be renewed up to 18 years uh, for others remaining you no know, crops it can it is 6 years renewable up to total of 15 years okay likewise if you talk about uh, extant varieties i mean uh, the rights is are given to to produce sell market distribute import and export the variety and uh, the 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 duration is 15 years from the date of notification of that variety by the central government if you talk about farmers variety it has to be distinct it has to be uniform and stable and the rights are uh, rights are similar to what have been given to a breeder in case of a new variety and the duration is for is initially for 9 years which is renewable up to a total of 18 years for trees and vines and uh, for other crops uh, it is 6 years which can be renewed up to 15 years uh likewise uh, i mean the essentially derived varieties i mean uh, the 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 right is given to the breeder for the variety and uh, 
the duration for protection is nine years, which can be extended up to eighteen years for what trees and vines, and six years, which can be renewed up to fifteen years for other crops. So, so I believe this is the last tool that we are going to discuss uh, in terms of protecting you no know, creative uh, works. So this is semiconductor integrated circuit and layout design. So if you, I mean, if we see the 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 <clears throat> the integrated circuits, okay. So this is a back of a laptop, wherein you can see you know various circuitry elements. So we have transistors, okay, and we have other elements which are connected through you no know, lead wires, and they are embedded on a motherboard. Okay, so. So the the layout of these integrated circuits requires a whole, I mean, the 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 lot of you know skill, and uh, I mean skill and investment also. Okay. So if you talk about a laptop, the size of a laptop, you no, know, is defines the 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 price. If you see the mobile phones today, the 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 size of these integrated circuit circuit which leads ultimately to the final product. Plays an important role to make it handy, okay. And uh, these these elements becomes important. I mean, important to be protected under. I mean, some tool of IPRs. So likewise, semiconductor integrated circuits and layout designs are protected under this Act, wherein they they protect the layout design of the semiconductor. Okay, so. in common language we call these as chips or microchips okay and these integrated circuit they as i told they contains transistor circuitry elements which are basically inseparable okay and they are embedded on the surface or within the semiconductor material which is the uh, overall arrangement the hackers speed up it okay okay ma'am uh, uh, so we can see the circuitry elements and their functionality in various no uh, electronic items and uh, if we talk about the the I think these slides are not moving yes so if we talk about the subject matter of registration it is the layout okay so when we talk about these circuitry elements these transistors lead wires and how they are arranged on the semiconductor material so all these elements when expressed in a layout designs so this layout design is the uh, subject matter which is registered under this the i mean this act or when if you talk about the essential requirements of registration under this act in case uh, i mean the 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 layout design is not original okay or is devoid of intellectual efforts or was known earlier then it is not registrable under the act okay and there is i mean in case it was commercially exploited beyond 2 years globally also then also it uh, lacks the essential ingredients for being registered and the in case i mean the the requirements of being uh, for the registration is that it should be inherently distinctive and it must be i mean it must distinguish the the circuitry element from the earlier registered ones okay and uh, there is a possibility of combining two or more no such so, uh, layout designs however it must show a uh, input with regard to intellectual no skill uh, put in so in case it qualifies i mean th these parameters then it can be registered the duration is for 10 years and the time is uh, counted from the date of filing or the date of first public exploitation within india or outside so in case the work is commissioned then the ownership remains with the contractor who has commissioned that work so now we are i mean go, after going through all these tools of iprs now we can you know we are now equipped to identify the various elements of intellectual property rights if we talk about this this uh, i mean the bottle okay or the can that is shown in this thing so we have a coca cola which is a trademark okay the, the name which is represented graphically is the trademark then we can have a patent for this opener 
is stationary bottle opener okay it is a patentable subject matter then the shape of the bottle or the lines or the you no know, patterns that have been made on this this bottle are subject matter of design registration then this the the, the, the lid of this can again is a uh, inventable i mean the patentable subject matter then the 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 label that is being used on these uh, bottles they are copyrightable and the the, the 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 formulation okay or the recipe that is being put in is a trade secret because it is not disclosed anywhere so now we can see that there are certain conceptual similarities in all kind of iprs however they also differ in certain elements when we talk about similarities okay so basically they either cover products or processes of create, uh, creativity okay and there is a certain criteria for every tool okay in case you fulfill those criteria then only they are capable of being registered under that tool and they confer certain exclusive rights which are i mean exclusive and uh, you enjoy those for a limited peri period however there are certain limitations and exceptions to it okay and with regard to the, uh, the differences we can see that each tool has a different subject matter of protection so if we talk about copyrights they are art artistic literary dramatic works if we talk about patents they are technical innovations if we talk about trademarks they are the marks which can you know differentiate the products if we talk about gis they are the marks which gives a significant you no know, correlation with the geographical location and uh, likewise we have i mean different tools which have different you no know, requirements of uh, i mean subject matters then there are certain requirements patent should be novel they must not be i mean they must not be obvious to a person skilled uh, skilled in the art uh, for uh, copyrights there must be a element of creativity okay and likewise the, all the iprs they have different requirements okay and there are certain i mean different conditions of protecting these iprs the nature and nature of rights are different and duration of protection is different and the nature of protection is basically for artistic work it is lo longer because there is a, an element of authorship however for commercial products it's a i mean they have a lesser period of uh, protection granted under law so to summarize if we talk about copyrights uh, it is granted for literary music, uh, musical artistic works like i mean i mean a, a book and then we have other related rights uh, which are combination of the you no know, literary dramatic musical or artistic works like a sound recording or a cinematographic film for patents uh, inventions are registered under patents like a vex i mean for example we can uh, uh, get a patent for vaccine or drug for trademark certification marks and collective marks the sign must be capable of distinguishing the one's products from the other or the services so coca cola is the best example then uh, uh, with regard to gis as i told uh, it may relate to certain a play, certain place and the i mean that place must have a linkage to the reputation that the product has created for example it is i mean the darjeeling tea and other no gis which are registered in india for industrial designs it is uh, it is an element of aesthetic look and feel like a design of a basket design of a car okay so these are all registered under designs if we talk about uh, layout of integrated circuits the layout design of the integrated circuit which we i mean which we also know as mesh works are registrable under layout of <coughs> layout designs act uh, for plant varieties new plant varieties and uh, uh, other varieties are registrable for example this is the i mean hansraj is one of the species uh, i mean one of the variety which is registered for rice so to summarize we can say i mean uh, the iprs are the tools which create which protects the creativity and inventions of the you no know, the authors the the inventors and i mean it's a tool to protect the uh, i mean uh, the creativity okay and uh, if you talk about patent designs and copyrights they enable creators and innovators to get recognition and commercial reward with regard to trade trademarks and gis they help to differentiate particular goods and services from the competing ones and they are helpful in creating brands and loyalty and uh, these tools they convert creative ideas into assets which are tradable okay so you can get monetary benefits or economical rights out of these ideas once they are protected and become an iprx 
IP asset. Okay, it is also helpful in helpful in protecting and boosting innovation. It is also no, it gives an edge in your business and it is helpful in enhance, enhancing growth. Okay, so if you talk about MSMEs, there is a study wherein I mean seventy percent. I mean, I mean the MSMEs which have which are driven by IP tools which protect their innovations by IP. They have seventy percent more growth as compared to the the MSMEs which uh, I mean which were not uh, no taking advantage of these IPs. As I already told, branding and I mean uh, it uh, it imparts I mean it helps in branding and gives a uh, financial security to the investment that the inventor or the author has made to it so this is all about i mean the the iprs and i hope that uh, i i uh, i i made you understand uh, the basic concepts wherein you can know assess a product in terms of um, uh, protecting it uh, by various tools that are available under iprs thank you very much Thank you so much, Anil. I think it's been a really very detailed presentation. Uh, I will raise, uh, I mean, read out certain of the questions that are there. Uh, in fact, uh, before we get uh, move on to you know taking up the questions, I have a general uh, uh, announcement for all the participants. Uh, thank you so much for your patience. You know, for being with us through this long hours, especially in the late evenings. Uh, we will take up a few questions now, uh, so we will be able to address your queries. But in case there are any further questions that are left out, we will make it a point to address it in the next uh, meeting, that is tomorrow, Okay, before we start the presentation. Uh, so, Pesh, would you like to raise the questions or shall I take it up? Ma'am, I can unmute those who are who raise their hands one by one. All right. Uh, so there are some questions in the chat box. I'll read out a few. Anil, uh, one of the questions that I see in front of me is, can the process of NBA approval be made through a single window to facilitate traditional medicinal plant-based inventions for patent filing? Uh, uh, with regard to NBA permissions, first we must understand that patent is granted by one authority, which is CD PDTM. Control General of Patents, Trademark and Designs, and uh, I mean it's it's under the administrative control of a different department. Whereas for NBA, I mean the permission is granted by National Biodiversity Authority, so it comes under a different ministry. Okay, although this suggestion is quite, I mean we can I mean consider it, but uh, as of now, I mean these are two separate no administrative authorities working, I mean, uh, I mean, at different locations also. So, I mean, at present, there is no, I mean, I mean, we can't see any, I mean, single window kind of thing, wherein you file a patent application and also seek NBA approval parallelly. Okay. So till now you have to apply for the patent and you have to apply for the permission from NBA and you have to submit that permission to patent office before the grant. Then only that patent application will be granted. So this is the legal, I mean the the the, the administrative process which is present, and uh, I hope I could an answer your question. Sure, I mean, thank you. We'll take up the next question. Uh, the copy time, copyright time period for literary work. Please confirm. Uh, for literary work, uh, it's uh, I mean in case uh, it's a authorship work by an individual. Okay. And uh, I mean, the, the, the time duration for this work is the lifespan of the author plus 60 years. So it's a quite long time where, wherein, I mean, the rights of a copyright can be enjoyed by the person himself also and his legal heirs in case, I mean, he trans, I mean, those rights got transferred by, 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 by action of law uh, subsequently after his death. And with regard to the government organizations, since I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, um, the, the the lifespan is not applicable there, so the duration is for sixty years. In case the the work is done by a government department or an organization. And then the one question is on genetically modified crop varieties. The question is that are these varieties patentable under the Indian patent law? Indian patent law. Yeah. See genetically modified see 
we have seen the provisions okay so they say anything which occurs in nature is not patentable okay so if you talk about microorganisms and they are gen genetically modified so they have a human intervention which never existed so the the modification that has been done to the genetic element is something which has no uh, i mean the i mean the qualification for being patented under uh, the patent act provided it fulfill all other requirements also so the if you see the first case which came before the i mean which was which, uh, which came before the courts wherein the genetically modified uh, microbes uh, came was a us case if you see diamond versus chakravarti okay so there was a bacterium which was genetically modified to 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 dissolve oil okay to degrade oil so the court said that since these these elements or the microorganism which has been created okay never existed in nature then it can be patented and being alive doesn't no bar it from registration so this is the next thing. question yeah. uh, anil is can a plant variety be protected by gi plant variety can't yes. be protected by gi it Basically. can be protected by gi Black okay. varieties can be protected by GI as long as you are able to, you know, assign it to that particular location. There are many plant varieties that have been registered even under the GI. Uh, if anything is given GI tag, can any other IP laws be applicable? Uh, the answer is yes. yes. Okay. Uh, like, uh, for example, uh, a plant variety can be protected with the GI tag. It can be protected under the PPVFRA. Uh, and also, of, yeah. In fact, some of the GIs they are registered under trademarks also, as a certification mark, and uh, collective marks in various jurisdictions. Okay. One another question is: If someone patents a product in USA, then is it automatically applicable or enforceable in India as per international IPR laws? See, one thing we must understand: there is no international law which is applicable on all countries okay so the international treaties or conventions that we study they are soft laws laws okay and they give they are basically to harmonize the domestic legislations they give you the model laws on which you can enact your domestic legislations but for patents i mean the act which has been enacted domestically for example in india the patents act of india is the law okay so these are territorial in nature so us has its own domestic law and india has its own domestic law so the broad contours of these two laws may be same but the they may differ okay so with regard to certain elements like traditional knowledge so we have this i mean uh, provision of traditional knowledge i mean excluding traditional knowledge, i mean i mean the inventions based on traditional knowledge uh, from uh, patentable uh, inventions uh, might not be present in us i mean us law okay so once you have a patent in us you have to come to india and file a separate application and those applications will be examined in accordance with the law okay so these are i mean the, all the countries they have separate laws they have separate mechanisms okay and rights are given individually in that country however if you see the pct okay it's a mechanism for filing patent applications okay so they reduces the process considerably however the granting authorities are the domestic i mean the the countries under their domestic legislation so examination will happen in line with their domestic laws i hope this answered the question and then I think we will uh, request participants to raise their uh, hands and then we can take a few questions uh, from the participants who are still online. Namaste, Sukumarji. Could you please ask your question?
I want to apply for this cards uh, that what we are going to call it as Kartuka in South India, or we are maybe called as Surma also. And we believe that when there are so many evidences are also there in Ayurvedic books that it has the medicinal values. Uh, but there is no scientific evidences in allopathic medicine. If suppose we prove the medicinal values of this castle scientifically that it doesn't make any harms, can we file a patent uh, for the medicinal values of this castle? I will answer this, Anand. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, Dr. Seishu, no traditional knowledge can be patented. Uh, that is as per section 3P. This is uh, for India. You will get to hear more about traditional knowledge in tomorrow's session in the context of IPR. But while I say that, I also want to clarify mere validation of any traditional knowledge is not a matter of creativity or invention. You are proving something that is already known. So patent will not be given on those grounds unless there is something that you know was not foreseen in the traditional knowledge and you are able to create. Uh, say, for example, I have a question here on the screen that says if I have created a new process for a particular product, would that be patentable? The answer is yes, because it, it there is no prior art already available. And ma'am, here I have to pass a question. Uh, there are different methods for them. They have to, to prepare this casual. Uh, in different areas, they are going to use different methods. Here I want to uh, search for that. Which method is the best one? And what are their medicinal values? And how long they are going to be persisted within that sample? I want to check that here. Uh, if we made any uh, alterations or any preparation methods differently for a long elasticity of this medicinal values, uh, can it be applicable at that time? It should have a meaningful technical or economic advance over the prior art information because it is when you're talking of prior art, it is information that you're collecting from everybody and then you are doing some scientific evidence, I mean, uh, experiments to validate and improve upon, right? Unless that improvement is something meaningful, you will not be granted a patent. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Rajesh, please. Hello, uh, am I audible? Yes, 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 you are. Uh, 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 I have created a process uh, based on uh, Indian knowledge systems like Ayurveda, Yoga and all the other things. So comprehensive package, all components are related to Indian knowledge system. But I have uh, invented a process for mental health care. So is it patentable? If it is a new process and it is different from already known, uh, yes, it is patentable, but the product will not be patented. Okay, it is only the process that will be patentable. Okay, yeah, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Vrittam Shakti ji, could you please ask your question? Uh, good evening, sir. In what happens to the rights after the completion of the renewed tenure? Like for design, it, it is for 10 years and the renewal is after five years. And what happens after that? I mean, will it be free for the public or some other can claim that rights? It will be free for the public. See, there is a for differentiation use, given for use, by, but it is a prior art information. One cannot claim a new ownership of what is already known. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sir. Ramachandran ji. Hello. Hello, Namaskar. I uh, hope I'm audible. Thank you for this exhaustive session. And a uh, few queries are already answered, but I would like to extend this um, for this uh, recovery what I've had. In the interest of large public, uh, recently we have seen this pandemic. Maybe like uh, something like paracetamol or something which is very essential and required. If somebody has uh, patented it, in such case, in the case of emergency, if there is anything, any problem, where uh, it can be given to it in the larger interest, is there any such instance? Uh, so your question is, in case of emergency, can we waive these rights? Am I clear? 
Yeah, the government can yeah. to keep yeah. it very simple. In case of emergency, the government takes a call and it can, you know, uh, get wave off the patent uh, protection and then make it open for the public. In fact, there is a provision of compulsory license also. So in case government feels there then that there is, I mean, the need which, ar which has arisen and the license is to be given somebody for to produce that and it fulfills the requirements of granting a compulsory license, they can then the license can be granted to the person. <clears throat> Definitely on the terms and conditions agreed between the parties. Uh, it's almost eight o'clock, so we can take the last question, ma'am. Sure, yes. Shantiji, please ask your question. Hello. Namaste, sir. I already posted my question. Uh, I got one idea regarding that traditional design. With the current application, we can make use of it and thereby it is extended to three more applications. Is it possible to uh, file patent? And is there any requirement for hardware device related with our idea? And uh, that is provable one. I already proved with uh, all the programming parties with me. Uh, is there any special heading for Indian knowledge system patent items? Hello. Yeah, ma'am, actually, uh, design patents are not granted in India. If you see other jurisdictions like US, so design patents are granted for the utility. So in India, there is no provision and we have to comply, I mean, with the with the, the essential requirements of granting a patent. I, I mean, okay, we'll ask the clarity, uh, Shantiji. Are you asking whether you know a design can be filed, or are, are you talking about patent being filed? I think that if you can patent only uh, using our traditional idea, I am applying it in the current technology application. One with the steganography, another one with the wireless sensor network. In that way, I am uh, mapping our traditional concept with this part and. All the items are proved with whatever required for stenography that is achieved through this uh, design. Design means I am using that concept of tradition and making use of that concept, I am preparing the code that is applicable for uh, stenography part. Yeah, Shantiji, I just want to clarify in India, software is cannot be patented. Software ah. is only protected as copyright in India, whereas in the oh. countries like US, even copyright, I mean, sorry, software can be patented. In India, we do not allow patents on uh, software. So, how to project our traditional concept is having such a. You can uh, file a copyright. You can file a copyright. We are talking of only patent, right? Patent you cannot do, but you okay. can protect your uh, software as a copyright. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for the clarity. Thank you, madam. I think we'll stop here, Piyush. Uh, yes, ma'am. So we yeah. just uh, end with a show with something more. Yeah, just but one second. I will just remind yeah. everybody if there are some questions that we have not taken up, I would request all of you to, you know, we will take note of these questions and answer it tomorrow. And uh, let's close the workshop today. So namaste, uh, this is Anuradha here. I managed to connect. Thank you very much, uh, Anilji, first and foremost, for your presentation and also uh, Vishwaj Anilji for being there and helping it. Thank you also to Piyush. Uh, we can close it, I think. I think we'll try and stick to time also because everybody has worked generally. So thank you all very much. I request Piyush to please end with a prayer. Shanti Mantra. And see you all tomorrow as well. We are seeing that the numbers are reducing a little bit. So please. Uh, stay there, join every single class, you'll be the beneficiaries. Thank you. <coughs> Don't stay. Oh. Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya 
पूर्णमेवशिष्यते ओ शांति 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 Thank you thank you everyone thank you page